right now. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to this exclusive interview with myself, Terry Gadraj, and uh, Roshan. Um, you know, to get to the shard of things, recently there was a post by Terry Gadraj, and a lot of times we say people do not need introduction because it's expected that they're well known. Um, but the main fact that Terry had to make such a Facebook post, it shows that he is known, but a lot of times you don't get the respect that you're deserving of. And it's not my job to decide um, what Terry should have gotten. What I'm doing is highlighting Terry's issues. And, you know, as a form of disclaimer, I can say myself and Terry and... Um, his friend Roshan has been friends for quite some time now, right? Nonetheless, I have been known to be fair and very professional when it relates to me highlighting issues and not holding back my personal opinions. And that is the same thing we're going to do this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Terry, I want to welcome you. Um, Roshan, welcome. Um, and we are going to get straight into it because what I want to discuss again, for those of you who don't know of this issue, um, it's not just an issue we're discussing here. We're discussing who Terry Gadraj is, who the Guyana Babu is, um, what Terry has done, how he has contributed to Guyana, in what way. Um, a lot of young people might miss it. Sometimes I go to places and I'm said to be the most famous man in Guyana <laughs> at this time. And I go to places and people look at me and say, you know, who are you? I'm telling you in Guyana. <laughs> and people are like, who are you? <laughs> and for the first time I experienced that, I was like, you're joking? <laughs> but then I came to the realization outside of an ego, <laughs> I need to calm down because they got people in there on phone. They got people in there on Facebook. Correct. If you mention my neighbor, they say, oh, well, I've heard of Critic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I've, I know the guy personally. Right? So, Terry, I want to thank you um, for coming. Pleasure. And giving me this opportunity to give the viewers clarity, some bit of clarity. Certainly. Um, for the viewers, uh, i let you know, Terry recently made a post on his Facebook page, and you could go to his page Terry Gadraj, um, very lengthy post. And I told him, I said, we got to do an interview <laughs> because most people <laughs> ain't going to go in depth with that. Yeah. Pe Terry really poured his heart out. I had my opinion. I spoke about it on one of my morning lives. And I told Terry, I said, we got to sit down. We got to discuss this thing. But we're not going to be discussing that alone. We're going to be discussing a lot more. What is the way forward? What are some of the things we can do as a people to see culture differently. It's very important, these things. Um, you know, unlike things that are affecting us and you don't know where it's coming from, if you don't have culture, if you don't have structure, culture gives structure to a society, right? You're going to lose certain vital things that make a society what it is and make a society great. We don't want a society that is falling apart. We're looking to build a society that something can be spoke of when that time comes, right? Mm -hmm. So, Terry, um, I want to get straight into it. Sure. And for the viewers to understand, mm -hmm. you made a Facebook post. Correct. What was that about? In your, in layman terms, you know, how you just say it like you feel. What was your yeah. Facebook post about? Well, you know, um, I've been singing like from... Well, over 50 years now, since I was a young man, I started singing in our Mondays and the villages, entered like the band competitions in 1985. I got first place in a Mashramani. 1985. Yes. Um, yeah. I sang a song. I really want a lurky, but I don't want to get married. I said, I don't want no tongue girl. I only want country girl. <laughs> that was the song that I wrote back in 1985. And I uh, won first place with that. But I entered many years before as well. Second, third, you know. But I love the music. But we grew up in a Mandir uh, mm. setting. So, I mean, we'd always go sing for people free. No pay, anything. But we love doing it. Come my, my great, my great-grandfather came from India, 1838, with a little sitar. 
and he kind of passed that music on to my grandfather, my dad, all my uncles played like a musical instrument. So we didn't get to go to school to learn, but one taught me guitar, one taught me uh, keyboard, my dad played the accordion, and you know, I learned the whole luck and everything. So that's my music background. And um, it was when I heard Sundar Popo sing, na 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 ni karte nikale di de di de, that's when I really fell in love with Chutney. Because he was the first guy who sang a song that embodies who I am. Okay, my ancestry is Indian, but I was born in Guyana, which is considered a part of the Caribbean. So he was fusing those two genres together. And there we had chutney, as they call it, soca chutney. And in Guyana, we used to call it like Creole music, local music. Right. So I, I was a part of all of that. I enjoyed it, played with a couple of bands in Guyana and I wrote a lot of songs, you know, many, many songs, had an exercise book. And if I could tell you a quick story. So but we didn't have a tape recorder. So you had to listen to the radio. And I had my pen right next to the radio. So when we hear when Jim Reeves sang, I write one line, one other line, one other line. <laughs> next week we hear back the song, I feel in it. <laughs> so, I mean, those are, it, it was real struggles. And my mom, they love listening to all the old country and Western. I mean, later on, fast forward, I did an album of Sweet Love Songs, did really well, one of the best ever. And then I did a volume two, volume three, volume four. So yeah, so that's the background. And then I migrated to New York because I didn't have, I wrote a lot of songs, didn't have an opportunity to record them in Guyana. But so as soon as I went to New York, it was like, recording, recording, recording. I did all of that. And back in the days, I mean, I love my country. I love my culture. I love where I came from. And I would go and try to take my Guyana flag and people would curse me, literally curse, throw that because at that time it was a different regime. Everyone was leaving this country. Would go to any country that would take them. Trinidad, I'm going. Suriname, I'm going. Venezuela, it doesn't matter. So I had an opportunity. I went as well. And that really shocked and saddened me when I saw people, you know, reacting that way to a Guyanese song or a Guyana flag. And I was like, I really got to do something about this. Because people in, in even Guyanese, when you ask them where you come from, they would never say they're from Guyana. They would say Trinidad or some other country. And I experienced that in New York, Canada, you know, we did different events. So it was a sad feeling for me. So I took it upon myself. Every song I sing, I'll try to include a little something about Guyana. You know, a little Guyanese word, a little Guyanese something. And yeah, I did a song named Tun Tun Dance. So that was my like first hit kind of. Prior to that, I did something named Ratataya Re, Ratataya Raya Re. I go in Guyana to see me love. You know, so all these songs, I tried to do that. And, um, but over the years, you know, I, I kept doing that and, you know, I, a pioneer, you know, uh, most countries that nobody would go to or cities, I was the first one there. And even the Trinidadian artists will tell you I opened the doors for Chutney as a whole. First one to do an event here, there. And then later on, fast forward now, you know, I did and I became popular. People kind of know my name a little bit more. And um, as I go around, you know, I go to India, people recognize me for representing Guyana because I sing all these Guyanese, Trinidad, you know, they would give me awards, they would give me recognition and everything. And the sad thing is like when I come to Guyana, you know, I'm a guy I believe in. If me treat you nice, I would expect you at least to say something nice mm -hmm. to me. You know, I treat you bad, it's all right, you know. But the way you treat, and I'm always the first one to, you know, be nice, be kind, be cordial, good morning, good afternoon, say something nice. But I experienced like in Guyana repeatedly and it was getting worse. You know, disrespect. I wrote about it in my post um, and I kind of went back most recently, like I said, with Masha Money. You know, I'm the first Chutney Soka singer to even sing a song about Master Mani. And I've been through all of that and everything. But they would never, ever, ever call me to sing one song at an official Master Mani program. And uh, even though I come in the country, I'd buy my ticket. Roshan has come with me. I'd buy my ticket. Come just to support the younger artists, talk with them, give them some encouragement. They would know I'm here. And not a single soul would say, invite me to it or be a judge or be a mentor or something, you know. And I've got so much experience in this business over the years. It's crazy because 
I'm the only singer who travels every week, every month of every year for over 30 years straight, nonstop. Every week I'm somewhere sacrificing family, sacrificing everything. And even I would go to places like one example, St. Martin. The first time we went there, a gentleman called me, uh, let's do an event. You know, we want to do something for Guyanese, lots of Guyanese in St. Martin, but, you know, budget and money and all. So I told him, like I would tell most promoters, anytime I'm going for the first time somewhere, they're taking a chance on me. So I told him, bro, I'll do this for free. Take care of my expenses. If you make any money, you can give me something. If not, I understand, you know. And we went to St. Martin, and once we opened the doors, I mean, it was a successful event. That was the biggest event that we did. You know, and it was a Guyana independence event. You know, it was all big enough Guyana. But even when we do those things, the media in Guyana would never cover it or say, you know, there was any, I, I don't want the tanks, but at least, you know, mention, you know, an event was done. We created history. In St. Martin, Roshan was even a part of, for the first time, the carnival in St. Martin. We raise our own money, you know, you know, put money out of your pocket. Good friend of mine, Dave O from New York, you know, he financed uh, some of it and we got other people to come. We did a Guyanese float 100%, first time history in St. Martin. And mm -hmm. you know, nobody ever says a thank you or recognition. Now, if they never said anything like that, I don't have a problem. But boy, the dissing and the disrespect, um, like I said, and most recently again, CPL Cricket Carnival. I asked, you know, I reached out to a few people, hey, can I perform at that event? You know, kind of play Bangali Babu, like all the cricketing, all the sporting events and everything. And again, it's not you mm -hmm. trying to infuse yourself in anything. No. They're playing your music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was, it played there. I was there. I could have been singing it live. And I'm not a guy who say, pay me a million dollars, pay me a dollar. Whatever it is, it's an honor. It's an honor to represent my country. And I've done that. I mean, charitable events, I love to do one every single month of my life because we came from a background where in our little Monday and singing, my dad, we were all musicians. Everybody would invite us, sing at our prayers, sing at our jandi, puja. We would go free, nothing, you know. So we're accustomed to doing charitable work. Terry, one of the questions are going to be asked, and, I, you know, I feel honored to... Um, have this experience and you opening it up in this way. The funny thing is, <laughs> I could be, mm. um, you know, very last sometime or haven't on television <laughs> because it only happened last night. <laughs> so, guys, if you didn't know, last night I took Terry and Roshan to to Barbies to Albion. So all the way they have taken, they're going to perform. <laughs> so I didn't care. Somebody came in. I said. No, no, I, I'm going to see Terry perform. So when I put on the phone, Terry was in the car. He said, no, no, we're going to perform. I just go in, you know, we're going to see Vicardi. It's Vicardi, yeah, the yeah, guy's yeah. name. We go in, Vicardi's performing, and we go in and see Vicardi. No, this is from Georgetown. I'm sitting in the car as I drive in the car. Me and Terry talking. So I could, I could have sailed away, you know, a whole hour and a half, two hours we drive in, and I didn't know it's what really going on, right? So you got to see with me. Um... The question, uh, you have become known, famously known as the guy in his bar, the guy, guy in a bar. Um, and when you made your post, yeah, the name Hanif came up, yes, being the guy in a bar, a, 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 um, a paper clip from the a old newspaper, a data saying something. Last night, you, you played an audio for me, and I'd like to play that for people to. To hear also explain that for me where Guyana Babu how you became the Guyana Babu yeah. and and if we could bring some clarity to this dispute as about Guyana Babu and Mr. Hanif yeah so um I'll just go back a little bit to when my son Marshall called me on stage to mm. sing Guyana Babu with him mm. um the first song he played out of respect was a Bangali Babu, ho Bangali Babu, Aranam, Paranam, that is my name. Me went to Parawana. Marshall played that, you know, he did that because the name of that lady is Elsie. They call her Douglas Elsie. All right. So she did a recording. And then after her, Manny Hanif also did a recording. Now, Manny Hanif's recording was a snippet 
of the Bangali Babu, Guyana Babu. He did like a medley of songs, right? Which a little piece of this one, a little piece of that one, a little piece of the other one. And which pretty much I did, Oh Bangali Babu, Oh Guyana Babu, right? But the rest of the song, all four verses, I wrote those. And that was the time when I moved to New York and then you realize how much you miss Guyana. May come from the country they call Guyana, land of the bauxite, the rice and sugar. I mean, back then it was bauxite, now it's oil. So we got to update it, right? And then I am going back, back to Guyana to find me a Dulahin. So over 80% of the song I composed, but yes, the hook, the chorus is from the older song. Now, there was Manny Hanif who took a piece of the Dogla Elsie song, Auntie Elsie. You know, I kind of feel bad saying Dogla Elsie, but that's what they called her back in the days. Now, prior to Auntie Elsie, there was another gentleman, but there's no recording. But from all the research that we have did, uh, they said he is the original singer of the song, a gentleman by the name of, some people say Ramgoli, some say Rangoli. But I'm still trying, I've been trying for years. And I'll go back all the way to the beginning of when I did Bangali Babu in New York. When we did that, as soon as the song came out and it kind of started becoming popular, people started hitting me and said, oh, I wrote this song, I wrote this song. So then finally I was like, I told Marbury, I've got to start making a list of all the people who are claiming they wrote this song. We made a list of 38 people because somebody from Burbies. But the fact is, like Roche and I were speaking, it was like a folk song. So everybody took those lines, like, here Auntie Bess, here Auntie Bess, yeah. here Auntie Bess, ah, mm -hmm. and they make their own thing. And as you can see, people do that even in Jamaica. They take their four songs and then they transform it a little bit, right? Um, so we did that and 38 names. But the one who was most vocal, and I got to tell you, Manny Hanif was an amazing artist. I think he was way ahead of his time. He played, my uncle who taught me to play guitar, Manny sang with him as well. Well, Manny was a guy, you know, happy-go-lucky all over the place, but great, excellent. He was a showman. He could do everything, acrobat and little comedian, little MC, little singing, right? So he did all of that. But because his family was the most vocal, my producer, Mahabir Records, um, what they did was they decided, like, you know, they, they want money, so we're going to... So he flew from New York to Guyana, and they got documents signed. They paid the family, the mother, uh, Mani Hanif's wife. They paid her the money and had her signed over the rights of that, despite that was not the original. It was from Douglas Elsie. But because the Hanif family were more vocal, as they are right now, and who knows, you know, um, well, they feel they're... One, like at that. least one. <laughs> yeah. Correct. So they did that, and there are two um, uh, witnesses that also signed the document. And right now, Mr. Mavir has a copy, and his attorney has a copy, because he does like a lot of recordings, and he does that. And uh, Guyana Babu is not the only recording where he paid. You know, there are other recordings, obviously, other artists as well that he did. So that was taken care of. And um, so that's Mani Hanu's daughter. And then the son, him and I, we played music together. Um, we have a decent relationship. We sang together in Minnesota, in New York. He's currently here in Guyana. So he was very upset about it because he knows that we did the right thing. Well, Mr. Mohabir, the executive producer of the record, they're the ones who put out all the money to make that recording. So in all fairness, they're the ones who should be making the money. Like me, everybody else, a musician, get a paid a little amount. If I tell you a amount, you're going to laugh till your belly boss. But, you know, <laughs> nobody knows the recording was going to do anything. And I am not one to go back to Bruce and say, man, this thing do good. You should have paid me more money, blah, blah. Mm. I respect the agreement that we made, and I will always stick by that, you know. So, yes, he is the one who did that. And as you know, in Guyana, there's not a single original CD or cassette as it was back in the days, you know? Everything was duplicated, duplicated. So despite the fact that Mahabir Records made no money in Guyana, right? Because all the shops, everybody, they just pirated, duplicated the cassette. He still went ahead and did the writing by paying the wife of Manny Hanif the money and had her sign the documents, which they have. So that was supposed to have been taken care of. And Manny Hanif's son, 
you know, he sent me a message to say, man, you could quote me anytime. You got a message, Roshan? Um, yeah. You got a, yeah, all right. No, Terry, and I think you would agree with me here. Sure. The problem you're having mm -hmm. or you have highlighted mm -hmm. is not a Terry Gadraj problem. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a Guyanese problem, right? Yes, sir. Um. To make sure credit is given where it's due, mm -hmm. I sat here and did an interview with a gentleman by the name of Malachi. Yeah, I know Malachi. And Malachi continually messages me mm -hmm. and tells me mm -hmm. of the issue and how can we highlight this issue and get it done. Many artists have been overlooked over the years. <clears throat> a very sad situation. And mm -hmm. in my highlighting your post mm -hmm. i said it was a guyanese problem i said the <laughs> place where guyana is today we're incapable of addressing the problem because we have not expressed guyanese yeah. the authorities mm -hmm. and everybody else have not expressed a willingness first thing to accept and identify that there is a problem Correct. and all of us in agreement. because what yeah. happens there are people making some money yeah right correct I um, can remember giving support and seeing a young artist kicking off um, A.W. Lyrical. Yes. And he does extremely well. He's not going to talk because he sings people's songs. Correct. But he's making money. Yeah. He's booked up every other day and so he's making money. Correct. He's too interested because that's not his area. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, he performs songs that people don't get revenue Correct. from. Correct. Um, Recently, there was an artist in here. Uh, what's the guy's name? What did he interview recently with, with Melody? Huh? Batson. Mark Batson. Mark Batson? No, but what's his, what's his stage name? Mark. Yeah. So, um, I've known that guy for a very long time. Yeah. I know him too. Right? Yeah. And the funny thing, the difference between businessmen. Yeah professionals and artists you got to have a special kind of love for something mm -hmm. to make yourself a fool and this is how i put it continuously till you get it right because a lot of times it doesn't work out like you expect Correct. you put your heart your soul it is a level of fanaticism that doesn't ex exist anywhere else correct because everywhere mm -hmm. else you can go to a book or a college and, and gain and acquire this thing over a time period. Mm -hmm. Be qualified and move into that. <clears throat> Being an artist is really, really um, betting everything on nothing. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So it really oh. hurts. I, <laughs> I was torn up. When I saw your post, and by the time I get into the third paragraph, I was like, whoa. <laughs> because, yeah. I, I kid you not, yeah. I told Roshan, I can't remember if, if Terry. So, it was me. I, I scaled up probably with Terry. Y'all yeah, watching. Terry has a nice demeanor naturally, right? So, he always got a smile, you know. He would always like, uh, you know, critic, yeah, Terry. And I'm like, how could you be in a good mood all the time? <laughs> you understand? I just get pissed off every once in a while. At least once in an hour. <laughs> you understand? Every time you see Terry Gadrat is a smile. So how do you do? And think everything is okay. And you know, if he call, Terry call me and ask me to do something. I can't remember his Terry Roach. <laughs> get through. Then call back for thank me and tell me that he get through. <laughs> yes, sir. And and always. So I know that Terry is coming from an area of love, and 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 because it's impossible to be this jolly all the time and it's not genuine yes i can't help it <laughs> i would laugh laugh with you and then i just get in a bad mood like, <laughs> like here no man yeah me and death on this game in the mood yes yeah. i done with that yeah right me who nice to ship it i yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. here and i tell them by i say <laughs> i can't remember if he went any cares about it but i tell him russia 
I see you know this man nicely shipping. <laughs> yes, I can't imagine nobody so nice. Right? So looking at it, I know when Terry says, um, you know, he looking for another, it is the, because even with the, Terry had to buy his tickets to go to the march. Shaman Tanisha, yeah, you had to buy your tickets. Yeah, that was sad. That was and sad, yeah. that hurt. Is he bring the tickets? <laughs> Fetch the tickets. Yeah. From Literally. New York, bring the tickets here, and then had to pay for one. No, you no, know, we call it buyback. Yeah. Buyback <laughs> one. Buyback <laughs> one. He won and he won. Keep it for the center. Keep it for the yeah. center. Don't worry, the cross. Cut it. Yeah. Right? So I had to buy back one of the tickets. Uh, to both of you guys. Now, I tell Terry, like, I said, bro. I don't buy tickets in a way. Nobody at no gate is stopping me from going away. And I then five years. You hear Terry history? 50 years in the uh -huh. music industry. 50 years. Uh -huh. Now, just to just to put it into context, there's a video with Terry and Sundar Popo. Is Sundar Popo is his name, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And give me a little bit about Sundar Popo from your perspective, because I, I I don't know, I know the name, but I don't know much about the guy. But give me a little bit and then we'll go to the video for the viewers. Yeah, we call him the godfather of Chutney music. You know, he started it all. And that's what inspired me to do Chutney so I can represent my culture and Guyana as well. So we kind of fuse the two together and get Soka Chutney. And I was very fortunate to learn from all these guys, Sundar Popo come by my home. I learned a lot. They were very nice to me. They encouraged me, advised me. They love what I did and I love what they did. I signed with him, Kanchan and Babla. They were super nice because I, I love the music. I genuinely really love it because promoting my culture, promoting who I am. And for all these years, it's only two years now, we started getting some new singers come out. But all these years, you ask any Trinidadian, any Surinamese artist, who is the one singer is always there representing Guyana? It, you know, I, mm. I'm always there and I love doing it. I go out of my way to make it happen. I would do a show and there are like 10, 12 Trinidadian artists, only one Guyanese artist. That's me. But I make that sacrifice because I love representing Guyana. I really love my culture, love where I came from. And I, I'm not asking the government for money or medal or award. I don't want that. Mm. That wouldn't help me. You know, I want them to do what's good for the culture. Let's be good human beings. I talk to you nice. I give you respect. But all I got from them was total, total, total disrespect. You know, every step of the way, you know, it's like you got to beg for their attention. I can tell mm -hmm. you, I can tell you, Terry, mm -hmm. there's been a miscommunication. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right out yeah. the back. If you meet the president, mm -hmm. no... <laughs> I bring, I've got a friend, uh, Dr. Mandy Parai. Mm. She is a journalist in the UK. So I ran into her and so And I introduced her to the president. She went over the bench. She come back and said, the president cooked fish curry for me. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, she never see a president cooking. Yeah. I said, well, we president is cook. She's got this natural drive, this nice demeanor. I can say, safely say, that I cannot um, fill those shoes. I have no willingness. Because such as, as, as we're having this discussion, mm -hmm. and you're still willing to put on a smile while we're having this discussion. Oh, yeah. If I angry, bro, I angry. Me <laughs> yeah. and I smile. Yeah. You understand? I pissed, mm -hmm. and I fume in, yeah. and I express that all the time. So... I said also, at this time, the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports does not have the heading that would take, now, no way, shape, or form, my plan is to pull down the minister. But I've always straight, I'm a sharpshooter. I've been with this guy when he's done presentation and he delivers. If you if he goes to a ground, if he goes to a ground and the people said I want this and I am there when he delivers. The thing is, I go back to those grounds. Nothing those grounds coming back from five years. Grass group on them every month, they got thing. And 
what we've what we've missed is you can't just sweep aside 50 years of hard work that's what we miss those drums will always be there correct culture and art forms have to be nurtured 100% you understand it's got to be yep. protected mm -hmm. great nations go to great lengths to protect their writings and their poetries the bibles oh, yeah. the different bibles of, uh, uh, and different religious books yeah. have been pro been protected over the years by wars mm -hmm. right yeah so <clears throat> first thing i think we don't have the individual in the position that is needed for this problem yeah so in general mm -hmm. if you have no interest in culture we ain't got no problem it's good right. bill grounds mm -hmm. Hold to dance. Yeah. And I said the man is a man mm -hmm. that thinks culture is football. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. I beg to differ. Correct. Right? Yep. In everything else, I think he's an overachiever. Right? But what would we have achieved at the end of five years when what you have done or put into the system isn't leaving a legacy. Now, when it comes to culture, mm -hmm. unlike, unlike infrastructure, there's only be going to be one infrastructural achievement or two that will be remembered for a long time. Look at the whole Barnum era. There's only one infrastructural achievement that dawns on everybody, the Harbor Bridge. <laughs> yes, and nothing yeah. because it's a feat. And again, yeah, the PPP is now gonna come, and they are gonna leave something because they're gonna build a better Harbor Bridge, and though, <laughs> and the memory goes on. Yeah. So both of them share in the legacy that was left there. Yeah. Fifty something years of father, something years of the floating bridge. Once the longest floating bridge, it hold that title for a time. Mm -hmm. Then it moved on, and it served us well all the years. They think they did that. They wonder. What are we going to leave in terms of culture? Correct. The thing is, we have failed miserably. And it is not for this administration going through. Me and Malachi mm -hmm. sat here and had a discussion when this yeah. administration couldn't have done anything. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So I think it's like putting a square peg in a wrong hole at this time. Yeah, perfectly. Right? Yeah. So... Again, I'm saying for the viewers, this is not a, this is not a Terry Gadraj thing. Artists have been looked over. Malachi, I can tell you, I can, I can, I can, <laughs> let me get it. I know if you don't know your history, if you don't know where you come from, how are you going to know where you're going? We have to know these things. Here, I get in a question here now for Malachi. <laughs> Good morning, bro. I saw the talk on Terry. Well, you see... What I'm talking about, question mark. <laughs> it had to come from Terry. It has come from many more than him, but never got the highlight. Now, Malachi sat here with me. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest. I tell Malachi, me plan, I got a plan how to make this thing work. I tell you last night. Yeah, so yeah. I tell Malachi, give me all the local music. I can start a local registration mm. and we just promote local. Because mm. I really am truly no interested in nothing else but local mm. too. Right? If Correct. I find nice local songs, once it's not derogatory and so on, Correct. I would listen Correct. to them. Yep. I look for things to motivate me, right? Correct. No, I said, give me this. Malachi hold on. So I said, if you hold on and do, yeah. all rights. Because mm -hmm. he's a man, and while when me and Malachi talk, we're talking about copyrights. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he was always saying, critic, you got for, we got for look at the artists, this, that, that, right? Mm -hmm. But I say, if we're going to make a change, we're going to impact on something. I'm not really interested in your fight. I got me fight. Mm -hmm. Yes, man. And if I tell you, I would take on your fight in this fashion. I looking for you, provide the thing to me. It didn't work. So I never took. Not to say that Malachi's fight is not genuine. Mm -hmm. I just never had the willingness. Correct. Correct. It's a case where I know where you're coming from. You're my friend. And I know that you're genuine to the bone. You understand? And I say, well, here, 
I'm going to talk about this and I think we should sit down and talk about this. Because at this time, I know there are people who work in the system that are working on culture policy. Why I say the minister is incapable? The minister is a, is, comes from prestige. You understand? Mm -hmm. Guy is a classy guy. Hear me tell you something. Culture is a grassroots thing. It is. Correct. It, it comes is. from the bottom. Correct. Correct. You understand? Hundred Rich kids yeah. <laughs> don't do culture. <laughs> yeah. You understand? They got a whole culture by themselves. Yeah. They just do class. Mm -hmm. They don't do culture. Yeah. Correct. If you're sick, if you get a fever, you ain't going to a mechanic shop. <laughs> You understand? <laughs> you know. Nobody and you know, all the artists, they feel the same way. I mean, I get, they're just afraid to speak out and say anything. They're afraid of repercussions, you know. So, and you got worried about repercussions. You've done <laughs> been yeah. sidelined oh, your yeah. whole life in Guyana. Yeah. You oh, understand? Yeah. What oh, repercussions? Yeah. 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 And the funny thing is, you ain't gonna change. Never say you changing your genre, you changing your music. You still there, but you still Guyana Babu. Mm. You still Terry Garraj. By the way, the 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 Hanif um the the yes, Hanif yes. son and and let me get that for you guys to hear the audio. So this is the guy. Good afternoon, Terry. I just sent a message my sister posted on Facebook and those other people. Please ignore them and let me apologize in advance for them. They're stuck in a place in the past. My opinion on the matter, and you can quote me this way at any point in time. My father's music was dead and gone, and you took it and you brought and made it into something modern, and something different in a time that people can enjoy and in a way in which people can enjoy and appreciate it. So I do not share the sentiments of those people. I am 100% respectful of your ability and the job that you are doing. Respect. So that is the, the son of Mr. Hanif. And who, you know, is his son. He has an understanding of what's going on. And says it like it is. It is the, the music was dead and gone at the time. And Terry... Um, and, and that is not what defines Terry Gadraj. It's the whole thing. You got to look at what has happened in 15 years. Like I and I is a new kid from the black. Yeah. And it's five years. <laughs> Terry yeah. Gadraj has been persisting. Now again, in a capacity that not even me has been able to come to. Tell me some of the countries you've been to and perform, Terry. Well, well just last year we performed in Dubai. Um, we did India, which was amazing. And the beautiful thing about India is I did it early, like May of last year. And uh, Mr. Charandas invited me there. We sang for like, uh, you know, uh, dignitaries from all over the world, representing different countries. I did not realize that the culture minister of India was in the audience. I mean, India, 1.4 billion people. But Mr. Charandas told me how much he loved my performance. And then they had a joint celebration of the independence of Trinidad and India. And she requested that me, Guyanese man, be there because she loved the way I performed, the way I represented Guyana. The guy sang Bangali Babu, she loved it. You know, and I mix it up. I sing. I always, like a lot of people go to India and think, oh God, I got to sing the best Bollywood songs. They want to hear you represent the Caribbean, where you come from. And I always do that. I would go sing my folk, my, um, folk songs. Of course, I got to sing Guyana Babu. Mami, Bele, Roti, Daddy, Chunky, Dal. All those little things, they love those. Like Bele, Roti, a big hit all around. People love it because you kind of touch their heart. That's a song that I wrote because my mom always Bele in the Roti and my dad would help her, Chunky, Dal. <laughs> so literally we wrote that song you know, in the kitchen, you know, because we sing it, and I'm like, man, I got to put it in a song. And my record producer, Mahabir, great guy. Any ideas I came forward with, he was like, yeah, let's do it. Even when I did the Sweet Love Song album, he didn't want to do it because he's like, no, man, I only do chutney. You know, I do like local music. I was like, take a chance on me. He did. And it turned out to be one of the best sellers ever. And we ended up doing four albums. But yes, I mean, I've performed in Netherlands, of course, Suriname, London. I do that every year. And I love like different cities, different countries, you know, and most of these are places that I have gone to the first time and I open the doors for not just Guyanese artists, but artists from Trinidad, Suriname, everywhere. Because once I open the door, like, like I said, St. Martin, 
every single Ravi B, Raymond, everybody, they've been there to sing, perform, Savita, all of that. So, you know, and I love doing it. I love being a pioneer. And like I said, I offer, I'll do it for free just to kind of let them see what our music is. Let them be, once people are happy, they want you again. And that's what has kept me in the business for this long, because I believe in working with promoters. I believe in helping them promote. You know, a lot of singers like, no, I'm not a promoter. I'm just a singer, man. That's not my job. I love doing it because this guy is trying to help our culture. It's all about our culture. And you rightfully said it is a grassroots thing. Mm. Culture is a grassroots Look thing. at the time. Rich kids don't do culture. No. Absolutely. And you know, rich they, kids they, do class. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, we've heard that, uh, you know, places like New York, New York mm -hmm. is a, a melting pot of different culture. But before anyone has have even gotten to a place like New York, mm -hmm. Guyana has always been a place of six races. Right. And, you know, to go back a little bit about what we said, and we were at the CPL, uh, Terry was there, we we're sitting in the stand. And, um, and this is just an example of how deep down in the roots, this, I don't want to say problem, this issue have gotten, right? We're sitting there in the stadium. And uh, one of the things we talk about is, Terry mentioned very well about our artists, but then we also have our DJs. We yep. have our producers mm -hmm. that are out of Guyana. Look, we have guys like Avinash Rupchan, Bunty Singh. They're phenomenal guys then, that's coming out of Guyana. But what they need is that support and that opportunity. Now, CPL, Guyana is, this year is our second year in hosting the biggest event of the year where people around the world are looking to come. And the, the batsman before Hitamaya got caught out. And what song did they play? Kahana Babu. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, there, I'm hitting my head. I'm like, a player got caught and out on the Guyana team, not score, and you play Guyana Babu. And then Hitamaya came and hit a six, and you play a Trinidadian song. Not we're not saying it's a disconnect that yeah. you know nothing against Trinidadians. We love our Trinidadians brothers and sisters. Yeah, but we are home. Yeah, I got it. we're it's here. predominantly foreign music. You know, playing, yeah. and that goes back to what Terry was talking about. There are time that there's a mentality that I don't want to tell people what we may eat for lunch because we might look poor, or me not want to tell people which country we come from because they might look down on me. If you are not proud of who you are, you expect somebody else to be proud of you? I sad mean, situation. Yeah. Very sad indeed. And if, and the thing is, Terry, people misconstrue this whole thing and misunderstand this whole thing. He did not ask for any award. <laughs> he simply is asking, recognize our folks home. Yeah. Don't let artists or DJs or producers that have the problem that I have, have themselves. Because maybe Terry could say, okay, I'll call, I'll call the president and I'll get in. But that doesn't mean a guys like A.W. Lyrical or one of the new and up and coming artists will have the same opportunity. So the idea behind it is that Turn around, stop, and check your pulse. No, but Are Terry, we doing you, the right thing? Outside of the, the general um, mm. thing that is, and again, it's not a Terry Gadraj problem, it's a cultural, uh, how we see things, it's a perspective. Mm. Um, it's just the wrong perspective at this time. And, you know, we're going to have money. We're going to be moving forward in this country. We're going to have a lot to talk about. And what are you going to do? What kind of people are we going to see ourselves as and i can tell you outside of the school one of the things that um educate people and guide them in a certain direction is music because there's a time when you're very receptive people don't know when you're happy you're very receptive that's why when you try to cram cramming doesn't really work because yeah. you're unhappy you're uncomfortable mm -hmm. trying to cram if you have you know you're listening to the music you're listening to positive music you will um, learn something from that and there's a there's a thing about music um, and the lyrics in music that 
that affords you the opportunity of a kind of wavelength, of a kind of discipline. If you look at people who listen to angry music, that is what they put out. Now, yeah. Terry, one of the things really hit home and was personal for you, your mom mm -hmm. and dad was coming. Now, you say, mm -hmm. you, you, you sang a song, yeah. and they're close to you because you say, uh, Mommy Bailey Roti and Daddy Chunky, Chunky Dad, and that's where yeah. it came from. You yeah. were bringing your mom, your father's in his 80s, yes. and you were bringing him back, and you go to the airport, and they got the old people, got them busy. And you were there with them and you're telling them, as old people, and can we go through the process? Mm -hmm. Tell me what was that like and how that ticked you off? Well, all those things to me, like it's not even if it's a Terry Gadras parent, but any parent, old people like that, why would you hassle them and harass them and question them repeatedly? And, you know, it, it is very sad. And it, those are the things that are so hurtful. And that happened. And my sister was there as well. Um, r really sad and I, those things should not happen and not just my parents but I'm speaking out for any 80 year old or older folks Try, after that experience they're like man I'm never going back to Guyana because they love coming to Guyana they do come visit still have extended family somebody on you know, a little wedding you want to come you know but you know it is not right and and that's what i'm talking about i don't want award i don't want medal i don't want nothing mm -hmm. let's treat each other nice and respectfully you know um and down here uh, from the comments and if i may make a little mm -hmm. the people who gave negative comments less than two percent but those are the ones who obviously didn't read the post or they totally ignored it or something wrong no no them. a lot of people did not because yeah. i was looking i know it's a long post but i was looking <laughs> at the Hanif situation. Yes, yes, that's a different Because Data missed the, the, the point. Yes. And whoever was jumping on the Hanif bandwagon missed the point. Yes. Because Hanif was passed over too. Yes. He wasn't recognizing you know, his, his artist being passed over. Right. So the point is people not seeing what is right in front of them, mm -hmm. what they really need to nurture, what they really need to take care of, right? Correct, correct. So, then somebody say, oh, it's not you who do it, it's Hanif do it, and yeah. it's the real Babu. And, yeah. and then like, you don't understand, this is about recognition. Mm -hmm. This is not about who did, yeah. right? This is about recognition. And it's not to say that you could look across the table and say they are artists yeah. that have been recognized and gaining recognition. Yeah. Do you think you've been doing, you could say you've been doing considerably well for a number of years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, most of your adult life. And I think it's mm -hmm. because of your positive demeanor. People yeah. just like you. People are drawn to you and like the positive energy mm -hmm. that you emit. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you were really ticked off after being recognized by Trinidadians yeah. um, compared to Guyanese? Yeah. I know you got, recently got an award yeah, in Trinidad. And, and if, did, that, did that play a role in, it, it did. in ticking you off? It did, because like, like I said, we went to India, a land of 1.5 billion people, and the Minister of Culture, and that's what you said, those are people who know culture, love culture, recognize culture. They know the grassroots of culture because our ancestor came 1838. You know, they were like indentured servants, obviously. But yes, every time somebody gives me, I was like, ah, you know, it's like foreign countries. They have, And guess what? They give me that award because I represent Guyana. I promote Guyana and Guyanese culture. You know, I'm happy now that we have some of the young guys coming up. So it's not just Terry Gadraj. And if you talk to all the artists, I always give them positive vibe. I mean, artists of my stature only want to do a collaboration with singers who are bigger than them. So they could, you know, get up there. Me, I love collaborating with all the young upcoming artists. And like you rightfully said, I would love for those older guys I don't want the honor. Give it to the Mohan Nandu, Komal Ram, oh, so many names, you know. Let's have a little wall of fame or something, you know, like oh, they had a Hollywood, you know, something like that. To give them a little honor. I mean, it would be great for their children and their generations. And it would show upcoming artists, you know. Nowadays, artists are more, you know, focused on money. And that's all right, you're, you're, you know, but... People back in the days were more focused on our culture, you know, develop. But here, as soon as uh, the problem here, like in my example, as soon as you get up there and get a little recognized, not wealthy, but you get recognized, they're ready to pull you down, you know. And like that post, I specifically said what I said in the post 
like and they totally ignored all of that and bashing me oh you want to be recognized you want a medal i don't but well some Sorry. people probably did what you did too they read the first two paragraph and skip to the end <laughs> see what's like, in the end yeah, yeah, yeah. no right? but again again um as i told you last mm-hmm. night i'm not waiting like people say oh you're boasting i too team me hard mm-hmm. because i never see Nobody running outside, no care for blow nobody else hand. That's right. I blow him me hand. Yeah. So, you know, I, I respect your, your thing. Now, just to give a little bit of where uh, Terry Gadraj comes from in the history of Terry Gadraj. Um, this is an old video. Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, what, 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 what kind of cassette? Uh, yeah, it was a, there was VHS. Yeah. I am gonna get a VHS. VHS. Now here I tell you, here I realize I out to me league. Yes, sir. it's like I done some museum here you now. I know, I know. I don't know what the buys them talking about. The man have a V. Where is a VHS? I ain't know. So show the video and it's square and this format. Is, yeah, and, and it's a, some square format because them guy give me a little thing and I say, where is this? It's some little square format. Show the video. And this oh. was the last show that Sundar Popor did before he died. That's why it is so very important. Okay. Yeah, it's very historical. So play the video, guys. You got the video? So that is <laughs> Terry with the guitar and Sundar Popo. But I highly believe it's Bob Marley, the video in the thing there. He had to have a spliff in one hand and thing. <laughs> because the camera, I tell you, there's somebody had to hide. <laughs> so they had a set of legends there. Whenever there was a show, that would be Bob Marley with a spliff in his hand and, and a thing in the hand. But because the, group, the group was made up of, uh, you know, Guyanese <laughs> Jamaican. and uh, Jamaican. <laughs> 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 I, I watch it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I can't. And that was black and white. Yes. Yeah. So they had to. They, they Technicolor. Had, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, my. Nice, nice. And so uh, that we, is we weird. We want to say thank you for Natasha Sunder, who's uh, Sunder Popo, a uh, granddaughter, watching us right now as well. Okay. Thank you, Natasha. Um, so you get a preview, and the guy with the guitar, the way they're watching, <laughs> is Terry. Right? So imagine how long. <laughs> 
ago that was. Um, so that gives you a, a bit of insight. And you know, um, a lot of people tell me, critic, we, 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 you're dedicated and you got his drive. Um, but I was a last soul five years ago. You understand? And to see the dedication, Terry, because when I see, I don't see, I don't see your notebook. I don't know what you do. <laughs> but you got things coming. Yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Well, obviously. He should tell you how he start. They used to call him the, the, um, the mic stand. <laughs> oh, tell me the mic stand story. never sing, never sing. Tell me the mic stand yeah. story. Well, you know, you're always hungry. You want to be on stage. You want to sing in a band, play in a band. So I'm always there because my uncle played the guitar in the band. So, But the, the leader of the band, he would sit on his chair and play the bongos. Yeah. So my first debut on stage was literally, I was a mic stand because I would sit on, I would squat on the stage, hold the microphone for the man to play the bongo. <laughs> but it wasn't demeaning to me. I was happy. You're on top of the wall. You never just <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at my friend. <laughs> I look, I might look at me in the envy. I made it on stage. And that's how much I really love what I did, you know. And uh, I, I love teaching, like all the guys in that band, Island Rhythm Band. The guy playing the keyboard, I taught him to play keyboard. He never knew how to play keyboard or anything, you know. But I, I, I love doing it because our culture is how you can elevate people, you know. And I love doing that. You also were a teacher before you left again. A school teacher as well. Tell me yeah. a little bit about your teaching days. Oh my God, yeah. The kids love me because I play guitar and sing folk song and things like that. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. They used to call me. Terry Yellow Man Gadraj, people who know me, because I so love this music thing. Like they had enough Bollywood singers, mm. you know, but I was thinking that a Yellow Man came out. So I'm like, Miguel Land Yellow Man sang, people like it. I know people want to hear. And I learned them and I sang them and they really love me for it. And after this day, some people who know me from back home, they would call me Yellow Man. Because I used to sing that because that was the way I could have gotten in the band. And I made it in the band. And me, they would put at the last, at the end of the year, when people leaving, they would put me on to sing at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. When I started singing, the people leaving, they would turn right back and come <laughs> back in there. So they know, you know, yeah. I know I was doing something like going in the right direction. Because when I was doing it, you had like Bollywood singer, Sundar Popo singer, Kanchan singer, you know. So I took Yellow Man, did the little reggae, little Bob Marley and thing, you know, I love doing it. Yeah. Uh, anything to make the culture, you know, and it's music. Music is all about love. I don't know how people can find hate in music. Music makes you... That's why you see me smiling so much. I love my music, man. It's right here. Terry, I know you got um, other commitments and stuff. I'm glad you've given us this opportunity. Where do we go from here? What would you like to see done? What do you like to, would you like to see? Are you willing to take up... You're in it. Yeah. It's a fight. I'm here. I'm willing to support. Um give you the, the, the viewership, the voice in Guyana. Um, where does this fight for equality in the music industry, um, do we include Malachi? Um, because you asked me about Malachi I did, last yeah. night. Yeah. Um, that means obviously you've been having talks with Malachi yeah. and Malachi is adamant about this thing. Correct. It's just that, um, you know, if you ask me to come in a fight, me just say, Mommy, why hold this rope in this angle? I'm strong in how I see I do things and also winning. I am all about success. So we know that the structure in culture does not um, suit what is needed to have real policy change at this time. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be uh, uh, the, the, the political will might not be there. Mm -hmm. um, we might be too divided. But if those are the issues, how do we start working on that? And what do you plan to do, um, you know, to make sure that we progress? Because the fight is on. It's out. Yeah. yeah. You understand? Yeah. We put out with gloves. Yeah. We're ready for action. Yeah. I'm saying we're there. Malachi has been singing it all the time. Yeah. Other artists are, are talking about it. Artists yeah. are talking about it. Oh, yeah. Where, what role do you plan to play, um, you know, in really leaving a legacy? Because this, this has been a fight of yours, not the only person fighting, but it has been a fight yeah. of yours, a lifelong fight yeah. to gain, um, you know, respect. And, and anybody could ask for that. Again, I am 
um, not one who is well-rounded, uh, a man. I, I can say that. I'm willing to accept that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, mm -hmm. I demand respect. I don't uh, tolerate any form of disrespect. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I understand coming from your vantage point where that is all you, well, again, respect in addition to. Yes, yeah, sir. Because I'm a businessman. I got to get me caught. You know, sir? You yeah. making your thing and all you're asking for is a bit of respect. Yeah. And, you know, how does this take an angle where you could really benefit from your country that you've given so much to? Yeah. And a lot of us can't say we have done so much and given so much like you have, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where, what's your concept? Where do you think the problems are? Yeah. And, where do you think we can go from here as a people? Well, the way I see it, and, and like you perfectly said, uh, the problem is a culture problem. You know, it's a grassroots thing. We got to start from right at the ground, dig dirty and thing and mm. plant new grass, right? So uh, I think the culture, I'm, I'm sure the culture minister is doing a great job or a good job of what he's doing, but I'm also sure that he needs help. I think he needs help in that area. You know, and you mentioned the name Malachi. We've got so many guys here who are so intelligent and brilliant. And, you know, all these guys, whether afro Guyanese or in, they reach out to me. I mean, they saw my post and everybody, they applauded me for it. They thanked me for doing it because it's something that they cannot do or they're afraid of repercussions. And that should not be the case. You should be allowed to, you know, speak your mind, constructive criticisms, you know, in a nice way. But I, I do believe our culture minister needs some help. Right. And when I, I did meet with him, was it two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I offered, I offered to help. You know, I want to let them know I'm here. Terry Gadrell is here. I have this much experience. I dealt with more people than any other artists have dealt with mm -hmm. because I'm so diverse. I sing with all the biggest Jamaican singers. I sing with all the biggest Trinidadian singers in the world, around the world, you know, and I get to share the stage with these people. And it, and, I, and they talk to me, they love Guyana, you know, but our Guyanese artists are not getting up there. I mean, the, uh, and like I mentioned in my post too, now it's a little easier because you're not just at the mercy of the Guyanese media now. You could put your stuff on YouTube and get it out there and, so, you know, all the social media platforms. But guys like Malachi, we need to tap into them. Um, Malachi has been advocating for a copyright law. I don't know how, oh. I don't know how practical that is, but... I think we need to get that discussion going because we want to give employment to our singers in this country. Look at it. Perfect example. Look at a guy that was in the street when we went to Full Range Record. He trying to hustle, sell us little thing. He's a musician, yeah. you know, very talented gentleman. He backed me up in a band and practically he's in the streets begging. All these people, we could give them employment. You know, if we have a little copyright law or something, I know it will take a while. And, you know, that's another thing with Guyana, no copyright law. So it's kind of hard to enforce different things. But we could get a discussion started. And I know it will take a while. Let's lay the groundwork and start working on it so we could empower the singers in Guyana so they could have the same advantages as the singers in Trinidad, the singers in Jamaica, Barbados, all our neighbors, and all those are, are countries that I perform at. I go to the radio stations, I go to the television stations, I see what the media does over there to help their artists. And I will give my, I will give my advice, everything for free. I don't want to be paid for it because I just want to see all the young artists come. I can do that, you know, give all those advice. So that's the first step in the right direction that we could do for our artists, you know, get the culture minister some help. Let's talk to artists and get some, you know, good opinion. Look at Guyana here, Eddie Grant. Now he doesn't sing Guyanese music, right? He doesn't mention Guyana, promote Guyana or anything, but He's Guyanese and he has the intellect. He's been there. He's been done that. I believe he should tap into Eddie Grant. You know, he has a knowledge of all the, you know, royalties and copyrights and what we can do to get our foot in the door and, you know, give, empower our local musicians. Dave Martin, another big name. Now, he has done Guyanese music and he honestly is my Guyanese hero because 
he's a little comedian and he does his song he sent his message in a little comical and humorous way but he is the closest thing to one of the elders who does Guyanese music promote Guyanese culture and give us Guyanese a good name and I learned a lot from him I met him we talked we sang in Barbados you know and a lot of the ideas we share but we need to get the government we need to get the Ministry of Culture on board you know I like to say me now I'm nothing buddy let me help build this call let me make some changes so we can level the playing field with Guyanese artists and those of Trinidad and Barbados and all these other countries but you know you know go to what Terry is saying a uh, critic um, that's a perfect example Dave Martin he sing the song Guyana, Guyana is we own not a blade of grass Guyana is this is it's us right have we seen Dave Martin did anyone give him an honor i mean he's not 60 he years old honor, but he's not yeah. 70 mm. years old yeah. right but uh you know how much of guyana tap into yeah. that resource yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that right? intellect, yeah. when we go to the court this the the, the 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 international court and we get a win the other day they say well the, the case could be heard and so not a blade of glass that sing <laughs> yes and this 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 is um this dealing with Things that is the essence of Guyana itself. Yeah. We fighting for the greater part two thirds of Guyana. And our representation culturally <laughs> is a song. Yeah. Nobody goes wrong and say, I will not nobody writes poems and do speeches. Yeah. 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 Yes, and right away when we get a win against get Venezuela, yeah. we ain't got no guns. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Dave Martin, not a That's blade right. of grass. That's right. That's, right. That's right. Do you understand? This is what brings all of us together right away. Whether yes. black, Indian, yes. Amerindian, Portuguese, Chinese, yes. it's Dave Martin's song that's bringing yeah. me together. Correct. Music. Yeah. And to entertain even kids, he sing a cricket song using animals, creative mm, yeah. ways. Yes. But the point is, the singers and the artists out of Guyana has find their own creative ways of promoting yeah. our culture, our Guyana. I too, right? Yeah. Uh, and one very important thing too, we need to, I know they talk about dance hall and all these things, right? But we really need them to tap into like reggae. You know, Jamaica has reggae, right? Uh, Trinidad has soca, calypso, you know? I think we need to tap in. And we do have, like Chanto, we have a bunch of authentic Guyanese music. And Eddie Grant started that trend with the ring bang thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the guys we need to tap. And I would suggest Eddie Grant, you know, Dave Martin and the Trade Winds, our boy Malachi, you know, tap into them. They, like, I, I know some of the business, but we have, and not just Malachi, but many other brilliant, brilliant, uh, the gentleman from Cross Colors as well. We've got Ian Johnson. I mean, we've got a lot of powerful names who know the music business really, really, really well. But we are not even reaching out to these guys, giving them a little love, a little respect, and tap into their intellect because we can do so much better. And they know the potential that Guyana has to create its own music, like how they have reggae and how they have so, and we can do it. And we have the people who can do it. We just need to have, get some help to the Minister of Culture. So maybe he can see the vision that these artists see and start building that Guyanese identity. But you see, Terry is saying start building, right? This is not something new. This other countries have been doing this. Yeah. But we haven't got into that trend of doing the right thing. Right. So we, not to say we are late in getting it, but we need to start. And we need to start yesterday. You know? Correct. And how do we Terry do that? Terry was saying we got to get people on board. <laughs> Me, you are. My first map and the head is overboard. <laughs> you understand? Because I say it again. Mm -hmm. Rich kids do yeah. class. They Correct. don't do culture. Culture is a grassroots thing. True. You understand? It's a yeah. thing that keeps people in check. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and it carries nations forward. Yeah. When you go to India, mm -hmm. you understand? Yeah. Then you know what culture is. There's an importance mm -hmm. in flowers. Yeah. Yes. You're going to see monkey run all about the place and cow all about the place. You understand? These are sacred things. Yes. I went into... Uh, Everywhere you go, the story, there's a story. Mm -hmm. When I go to buy me linen shirts and my cotton shirts, yeah. there's a story. 
that is being told. Mm -hmm. And then you see the essence of culture, mm -hmm. the yeah. pride. When I went to the Taj Mahal, they then take me and said, this man is the ancestor, right? His ancestors were the people who built mm -hmm. the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. This is descendants here. And he took me into a place and showed me, I did a video, how the man making the, 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 the Nice different ornaments and yes. all these things, mini Correct. Taj Mahals, and so then he carried me in a room at the back. He said, Can't video inside here, right? Mm -hmm. And if you see how much hundred US for this, how much thousand US for that, mm -hmm. and there was a story to it, yeah. In the business, oh, yeah. when I watch oh, it, yeah. you know, this is all about money, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But I wasn't made to feel that way. There was this story about this, you understand? It is the protecting of culture, and, and that helps us with empathy and so many other human mannerisms. Absolutely. You understand? This yes. walk up and this car thing and yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not the end of the world. Correct, correct. You understand? Yeah, that's yeah. not where it ends. Yeah. That is the, the, the beginning of a downfall. Correct. You understand? Yeah. If you are going to remember where you come from, mm -hmm. if you're going to have any memories that dawn upon you, mm -hmm. and I, when I'm saying culture, I'm not talking about music alone. Correct. You understand? Mm -hmm. It could be poetry. Dance. It could be different yeah. dances, yeah, 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 yeah. different forms of art. Oh, yes. You understand? Absolutely. Very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we got to look, if we're looking in that direction, we got to look at it from a certain standpoint. And I'm saying we're not in a position um, to make any major changes because I see what's been offered in this short period of time. And my thing is, we now have the financial resources. Yeah. To really make it work, Correct. to really yeah. kick it off, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So Terry, um, for the viewers, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that I covered everything uh, that you guys would have had an interest in. I'm hoping this discussion with Terry um, would have brought some clarity to this whole um, scenario, I would call it. And I'm hoping this also um, is just one more step forward in the right direction to really opening it up for artists and taking artists to a place where they can really express themselves and they could feel good um, about what they do and the fact that they've earned, um, you know, some bit of right, some bit of respect, right? So one uh, other trick we got for you guys uh, and it's gonna be released here, Terry's got a new song, a new video out. And no one has seen this. No one has seen this. <laughs> no platform um, anywhere. You guys are gonna be seeing this for the first time we left. Can I say something uh, before? The best for last. Yeah, yeah. please. Um, uh, you know, we talk about setting example, but I think like all of us, even the singers, the people in the country, or politicians, people in government, mm -hmm. we could learn. We have a leader who shows us how to be down to earth. His Excellency, you know, yeah. and I think uh, Mr. Anil Nandlal as well, always very nice, you know, uh, Mr. Jack Day as well. They would mm -hmm. go to any little Mandir, sit down with their poor and leave and eat their seven curry, you know. Those are little things that, you know, other politicians, government people, we could learn from a leader like Dr. Irfan. Mm. And I want to give a shout out. He doesn't want this, but Mr. Azruddin Mohammed. You know, he called me, he saw my post and he felt it. And uh, he also reached out to the president, you know, on my behalf. And I really appreciate it. He's fasting now and I know he wouldn't want this, but... Mm. I really want to say a very genuine thank you to him, you know, because mm -hmm. look at this, you know, we were able to have a discussion here and let the people know what is happening and, you know, maybe advising people how we can move forward. So talking about moving forward, this is a brand new song that I did. And this one is my first song ever that I wrote in Hindi. And my dad helped me to write this one. And I have a friend in India who also looked over the lyrics. And the music was done by a Surinamese friend of mine who also knows Hindi. So we kind of put it together. And the reason we did this song is because our parents, a lot of our parents feel neglected. And when you ask your parents, oh, mommy, daddy, you want to go out? You know, you're going to tell them, oh, me busy, me get this to the daffodil. But me can carry out. They're going to say no. You know, mm -hmm. but we need to, as you get older, you realize the value of family even more. And our parents, they need us. They need our love, you know, um, visit them, take them. They will tell you, you know, how parents are. They would not say, I want to go out and have dinner. I want to go on a vacation. You got to drag them. Tell them, mom, I booked your ticket. Let's go. You know, so those are little things. We need to show those appreciation to our parents. And this song pays tribute 
to all our parents, our ancestors coming down. So I hope you like it. And this one is called Chalo Chalo. Chalo Chalo mean, means let's go. Let's go to our parents. Let's go to our elders. We can learn a lot from them. Like I said, Eddie Grant, Mr. Dave Martin, all these people we can learn from. Thank you. So guys, um, the first time ever seen uh, on the Guyanese Critic Live, and again I must thank Terry. And just now when we came off, uh, we were off for you were looking at the video. Someone called and asked us to open up the phone lines um, to you know thank Terry uh, for his contributions. I would suggest that you put it in the comments so Terry would see, and that would be um, not only what is said but a memory. That is left there. Uh, what you know of Terry Gadraj and what you think, how you feel, you put it in the comments. Um, you know, and what you think about the situation in general. How do you think we can move forward? Where can we help? Sh we share ideas. We this is the beginning of a discussion. So Terry, again, I want to thank you for this opportunity to bring some clarity to this. And um, if there's anything that you want to leave with the viewers, yeah. you could. You have the last word. <laughs> I want to thank you, Mr. Critic, for having me on. Everybody loves you. My sister, she's watching right now, Patricia. <laughs> yeah, she watches you religiously more than all, everyone in my family. And um, 
I really appreciate this opportunity. And like I always tell all my fans, there is no me without you. You're the ones who make me who I am. Terry Godraj, the guy on the bubble. For that, I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope this has brought some clarity. Maybe I would have missed things, but um, there's always another time. And, um, you know, again, thank you.